This live presentation was produced in Ashland, Oregon by the Rogue Valley Metaphysical Library and Event Center. RVML relies on the support of our volunteers, members, and donors to organize and present these programs. For more information about this presentation or to borrow, download, or purchase other recordings from our catalog, please visit our website at rvml.org. Welcome. It's great to see you all here. And thank you for, uh, for coming out on the, the evening after the 4th. The 4th was a little uh, busy weekend for me, so, so this is a good, uh, it does that after a while. Uh, it's good to get back into it here. OK. So um, this evening's presentation is going to be on uh, emotional intimacy and the connection with uh, that and spirituality. Um, and I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and where I'm coming from. Then we're going to talk about uh, the topic, OK? So uh, as, as Hearn mentioned, part of my background is, uh, is Tai Chi teaching, coaching, and like that. But my primary hat is I work as a psychotherapist. And I've been doing counseling here in the Rogue Valley for 18 years. And my, one of my personal interests is in uh, emotional intimacy. And that arises primarily from my own history of feeling kind of lost and lonely as a small child. And now isn't it wonderful that I can create friendships? It's like, wow, that's great. And um, as it turns out, the skills that are, are of value in creating relationship with each other they're also the skills that work in creating relationship with your higher power and, um, and with yourself. So we're going we're gonna to go into that material. And um, let's just do that, OK? So many of you are probably familiar with uh, the, the work of Eckhart Tolle and his, his works on um, being in the present moment, the power of now, and like that. How many of you are familiar with that? Great. OK. And um, so, so his definition of spiritual, uh, spiritual experience is of being open and aware of the present moment. And my definition of, of emotional intimacy is very close to that. My experience with, with creating connection with other people is that when I am open with other people, and I have the experience of them being open with me, the, then I feel connected to them, and we have an experience of intimacy. Is that a common experience? Right. So can we talk about, it's just an aside, it's very helpful when I ask you a question if I get a response. So head <laughs> nods and yes really help me. Okay. So I'd really appreciate just that that uh, dialogue here, OK? So let's, let me just check that again. So does that notion, that definition of emotional intimacy, does that, does that work for you, that translate? OK? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So when we're open with each other, we have this quality of intimacy. And when we are open with ourselves, we have a quality of intimacy, OK? And so really, the process of discovering or creating uh, intimacy is, is the process of creating openness. However, due to our histories and, and the events that many of us have had in our past, we've learned to be fairly self-protective. Yes? Yes. yes? OK. So <laughs> thank you. So, so this process, you know, this process of being self-protective, it's something that we've, we need to acknowledge that we really all have learned. We've learned to, to be cautious with other people. And through the process of growing up and being treated in ways that were not necessarily loving and wonderful, we have also learned to be a little cautious in our relationship with ourselves. That is to say, many of us have the experience of being judgmental and critical of ourselves. Anyone relate to that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so if you're critical, if you have a subpersonality, a part of yourself that's critical of yourself, 
Well, it's very difficult to be open, isn't it? Okay. So it's like if I have a relationship with someone on in the outside, and they, I know that, you know, when they look at me like that, they're just about to bite my head off. Well, I'm not going to be real open with them right then, right? Okay. And so inside, we're like that as well. Inside, do you have? Do you, you relate to this? You have moods or places that you're in from time to time where you know, you're just like with yourself. Okay? So we've learned to be somewhat self-protective. And that self-protectiveness, I'm going to talk about that in terms of self-protectiveness or defensiveness. I've learned to be defensive with myself. I've learned to be defensive with other people. And I've learned to be defensive with my higher power. If we think about this from a psychodynamic perspective, from a perspective of, of development, psychological development, the relationship that I have with my caregivers, my parents are like that, I internalize. And I tend to have that same kind of relationship with myself. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. OK. And the relationship that I have with myself I tend to expect that relationship with other people. The relationship that I've experienced from the past, I tend to expect that in my relationships with other people in the present. Right? right. And further, the relationship that I have with my parents, I tend to have with my higher power, because my parents were my higher power. And as I mature, I tend to expect that my relationship with my higher power is going to be as it was with my parents. Okay? okay. Some of you may have wonderfully different experiences with that, which would be great. But a lot of people have this same thing. So we go to this question of openness. How do we create openness with ourselves, with each other, and with our higher power? And so all of this is really, it's related. Okay. Painful past experiences and relationships, they, they fit together like these puzzle pieces. And we, have, we expect these similar experiences in the, in the present to what we've had in the past. We treat ourselves in a similar way. And we protect ourselves from our present experience of life, which if you go back to our definition from Eckhart Tolle, okay, our present experience of life is our pathway to our connection with our higher power. With me? OK. So I'm talking about this because we have to lay the foundation of, well, what do we do about it? Okay? That's really the stuff that's interesting. We have to understand what the problem is. The problem is that we're defensive. And then what do we do about it? Okay. Now, this evening's presentation, I'm going to lay some of this groundwork. And then we're going to do some exercises. I'm going to ask you to do some stuff together. And I'm going to do a little demonstration with another person. And then we're going to do some other exercises to give you a flavor of, well, how do you actually do this? Okay. Let me just check my cheat sheet here. <coughs> OK, and so in, in that regard, uh, later in, the pro in tonight's program, I am going to be asking you to talk with each other and to share about different things about your experience. And within that context, I just would like to have an agreement around confidentiality, that when you're sharing with another person, they talk with you about something. Or if I ask a person to come up here and we do some sharing up here together, that you're not going to then walk down the street and go, oh, I saw Mary up there and she was, OK? Do we have an agreement around confidentiality? Can we please just raise our hands and say, you know, yes. OK, thank you. OK, so just checking my cheat sheet here. So one of the things to recognize is that creating, creating intimacy, creating safety, and the openness that then follows upon safety, that's built upon safety, is a skill set. It's not genetic. It's not like, whoa, this person has it and I don't have it. All right? It's something that, I don't know about you folks, but I was not taught. Okay? I, didn't, I was not taught how to create intimacy because in my family of origin, intimacy didn't happen very much. All right? So there's a skill set. And some people have that skill and some people don't. But because it's a skill, it's relatively straightforward to actually develop. 
Okay? So, and in, if you think about, you know, I had uh, a moment ago, I had this picture of the castle up there, you know, how we've kind of gotten defensive and protective. Another way to image that is that our hearts are at the center of a kind of a maze or kind of a labyrinth, okay? And in order for me to reach your heart, I have to turn right when the maze says turn right. And if I don't turn right, I am not going to reach your heart. Similarly, in order to reach my heart, that other person has to turn right when I ask them to turn right. Do, do you understand what I'm saying about that? Okay. If, they, if someone does not treat me in a way that I feel respected, I'm not going to let them in. You know, they're knocking at my castle gate in a way that I understand is belligerent, and I'm going to keep the castle gate closed. Okay? But if they say the password, ah. Okay? So we have passwords inside. We have, we have ways that, that we convey to ourselves and that we can convey to other people, and we can offer them the password that, oh, wow, so you're safe. You're going to treat me in a way that I need to be treated. It's really valuable to understand that. So now I'm going to ask you to do a little partner exercise. Okay? So what I'd, what I'd like to do is recognize that, OK, we're going to, we become open. We become open when we feel safe, when we feel understood, when we feel cared for, and when we feel connected. All right, so these are, these, this is the core stuff. Now, the exercise that I'd like you to do is to just explore. No, look, I've got another one. I thought I didn't have another one. Anyway, I'll talk about this one too then because the exercise is coming up next. So creating safety for yourselves and others, as I mentioned, is a skill. And the skill is composed of these very concrete pieces, noticing and soothing defensiveness. Okay, so as I'm, as I'm heading in the maze towards your heart or my heart or working on my connection with my higher power, when I run into a brick wall, I have to go, whoa, I ran into a brick wall. And I have to figure out what's the password for this brick wall. All right? If I don't honor the fact that there's a brick wall there and, and inquire about, well, what do I need to do to soothe this defensiveness, I'm not going to get past it. D does that make sense? Okay. And that's a really important skill set. Many people, you may have had this experience, you're having an interaction with someone, they become defensive, rather than going, oh, excuse me, I seem to have stepped on your toes in some way and offended you, or you go, why are you getting so defensive? Well, now that was productive, huh? huh? So, so we know what works, but most of us, most of the time, unfortunately, don't do it. So noticing and soothing defensiveness, that's a really important attitude. And then within that, being able to convey understanding, convey caring, and allowing yourself to connect and be with the other person. That's a really important one, too. I have the experience as a, uh, as a therapist. Sometimes I'm, I'm working with a person. They come on in and and I feel, oh, great, this is a person that I can be open and I can feel comfortable connecting with. Other times, I have a person come in and they're like, well, gosh, there's something about our connection or our energy that just doesn't hit it off really well, you know? And it's a real struggle. Those are the people that I should refer out, all right? Because it's just not working. And we all have that experience. There's some, there's some people in your life that you welcome the opportunity to connect with. And there are other people that are like, well, I don't want to connect with you. Huh? So, so we recognize there's some people that, that we want to have intimacy with, we want to feel closer with. And there's some people, guess what? We don't. Okay? And that's just fine. That's part of our choice. OK, so this is a very simple little exercise. What I'm going to be asking you to do is to just Turn to a friend or the person sitting next to you, whatever, and rate on a scale of 1 to 10 your openness. Okay? Rate on a scale of 1 to 10 your openness with yourself, 
Rate right on a scale of 1 to 10 your openness with other people, generally. Rate right on a scale of 1 to 10 your openness with your higher power. Okay? And then just discuss that with your friend. What's that about? What is it that makes you open? What is it that makes you not open? Is this a clear enough job description? Okay? So if you would, please, I'm just going to ask you to take, oh, like seven minutes, seven to 10 minutes, to just rate yourself on the scale of one to 10 on these three points, okay? And just talk about that. What does that mean for you? Okay? So the three points, again, are rating your sense of openness with yourself, with others, and with your higher power. Go to. If you need a partner, raise your hand.
So taking about another minute to finish up. So coming on back together again, if you would. <laughs> okay. Okay, so thank you all for, for sharing with each other. And it seemed like you were all having a pretty good time. That's good. That's good. Building some emotional intimacy with each other. That's good. We like that. Okay. So, so I'm curious, well, I'd like to hear a little bit about what, what people noticed. What, you know, what drew your attention from this? Yeah? He asked me to speak about myself first. So it sort of indicated to me that I might be a little bit more open than he is. Could be. <laughs> and it could be that, that by having you speak first, it soothes his discomfort. I don't know. Or it might have been like, here, let me be generous and allow you to speak first. Who knows? Right? Yeah. Yeah, Alan. It occurred to me, Nando, that I can only be as honest or open with myself as I as my awareness of myself. And that there are probably parts of myself that I'm not aware of. Yes. I choose not to be aware of at some level. Yes. Let me let me speak to that a little bit. Let's say that you had a traumatic history. Okay? Heaven forbid, but let's say that you had a traumatic history. Because bad stuff happened to you there's a part of you that doesn't want to think about it. Like, duh, okay? So because of that, it's like we, you know, you're familiar with the notion of the unconscious. Well, the barrier between conscious and unconscious is I don't want to think about it. Not and it's a habit. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I, I would argue that way. Can you see the hands of, of those who have never been roughed up, never been damaged, uh, never felt abused, misused, misappropriated. Mm -hmm. Do such creatures walk and talk? <laughs> I've never met them. <laughs> so everybody's carrying uh, some baggage. Yeah, that's my experience. Is, it, is that your experience? Absolutely. Yeah. And so what I'm saying is that, is that because we're carrying some baggage, there is stuff in our, in our closet that we'd just rather not dwell on, OK? And the layer, the, the barrier is, I'd rather not dwell on it. I'd rather not think about it. Generally, the people that I work with who have traumatic histories, they've got a lot of stuff that they'd rather not dwell on. And the people that have relatively less traumatic histories, you know, they can, they can afford to be more open with themselves, right? People who have traumatic histories, if you think about the trauma, you start having PTSD symptoms. And who wants to do that? Okay. Yes? Um, if you're like, overly critical and you have high expectations of yourself, so you're overly communicative about both negativity and positivity. So I would say, for instance, I think I'm a 9 or a 10 in terms of openness with myself because I'm so critical of myself. And I'm always wanting to be perfect. 
Uh huh. Um, but I think that's the other side of it. Okay. I would be a little suspicious, though. Generally, I find that if you have one person who is typically being critical of another person, that person does not tell them the truth. If I have one subpersonality, one part of myself that is typically being critical of myself, I'm going to have other parts of myself that hide. Okay? If I want to really know who I am, I have to not hide. If I want to really know who I am, therefore, I must treat myself with respect and kindness and compassion and understanding. To the extent that I treat myself with criticism, I will hide. Make sense? OK. Now, most of us human beings, we treat ourselves a little harshly. That is to say, we have a part of us that has ideals that we learned from growing up. We have a part of us that notices when we live up to those ideals and when we don't. And then we have a behavior change strategy of how we are going to change our behavior and get ourselves to meet our ideals. The behavior change strategy that most people have is punitive. That's an error. Right? That's a fundamental error about how to manage yourself. Okay? If you want to get peak performance out of a human being, do you criticize them and attack them? No. If you want to get peak performance out of yourself, do you have a habit of criticizing and attacking yourself? Well, maybe. <laughs> okay? You see the problem. OK. So I want to go back now to this idea of emotional intimacy being based on these skills. OK? So emotional intimacy is built on safety. And safety is built on one person's ability to convey understanding, caring, and connection with another person. And it all happens within a context of truly wanting to learn how to help the other person being open. If I want to create intimacy with my wife, and I go in there and I'm not really interested in helping her learn how to be open with me, well, guess what? That's not going to really work very well. Okay? If I'm trying to create safety with a new acquaintance, and I'm not actually interested in creating safety with, for them, I'm more interested in judging and criticizing them and demonstrating how superior I am to them, well, guess what? Okay. So we have to examine if we really are interested in creating intimacy, we have to admit that there might also be parts of ourselves that are not interested in creating intimacy. You follow? I don't know about you folks, but I have parts of me that enjoy feeling superior. See, I'm up here. Right? So I have parts of me that enjoy that. Well, that's not a good basis to cr try to create intimacy. Right? That's a less mature stance. Trying to create intimacy with another person is a very mature stance. Ideally, you're coming from a place of, wow, what can I do to help you feel safe so that you feel comfortable being open with me? So any questions or discussion about this to this point? Yeah, back there. What, what about like, uh, you know, the course of the day? You're not always going to be like in the mood to help try to create, you know, you might just want to be in your own, in your own space. So you need to maybe create exact times for that. Exactly. Like let's say that things are working well with me and my wife. And she says, hey, Nando. I'd really like to connect right now. Well, that sounds great. But like, I have to do this other stuff first, right? And I'm distracted. And I've got you know, 17,000 other things on my mind. And I'm sorry, I can't do it right now. 
So part of, part of really creating intimacy, really connecting with another human being is kind of making an appointment. <laughs> you know, It's like, are you in a place where we can connect really deeply right now? It's very difficult to connect really deeply to create the space and the time and the, and the mood if the telephone's ringing and the kids need to be fed and the dog is barking, and, right? right? And then there are other situations where, wow, now it works. So part of, part of two human beings coming together and creating intimacy is I'm ready and making sure the other person's ready at the same time. <laughs> all right? So it's not like one person's ready and the other person isn't all the time, you know, whether it switches or what. Okay? So figuring out a respectful way to negotiate about that is very, very important. There was someone else? Yeah, Gina. Oh. It totally does, right? And that goes to that gentleman's question, too. I mean, because there are moods that I'm in where it's like, I don't want to have anything to do with anybody else. I don't know if that happens for you, but you know. And then there, and like I was saying earlier, there are moods that I'm in where I'm really not treating myself very well. And there are moods that I'm in where, where higher power, what's that? <laughs> you know? So, so it, is, it is very situational dependent. However, we can recognize that there are some people that we know who are generally less open interpersonally, generally less open with themselves, generally less open to a connection to their higher power. And it's useful to recognize that, well, we're somewhere on that spectrum. You know? You had some? Yeah, I saw that it would have been helpful if you say, uh, give, give a theme at least, because then everybody would have to respond for, to that theme. Mm -hmm. You know, because otherwise to narrow it's it. our choice, and this is our choice, then it's a safe place to be. Right, right. If you would have said, uh, say, something unpleasant uh, experience in your childhood or something, or if not uh, dramatic, something else, because... Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. OK. so. So let's see, we're, gonna, we're going to talk a little bit about this, this, this the skills again, and then we're going to take a little break, and then we're, I'm going to do a little piece with a volunteer. And so um, I'm going to be asking for a volunteer in about 10 minutes, so you can think about whether that's something you're willing to do. Um, and so, so conveying understanding, I want to just talk briefly about each of these skills. Most of you are familiar with the idea of reflective listening. Right? Conveying understanding is based on reflective listening. It's based on person says, well, gosh, I've had a bad day. And you say, gosh, so you've had a bad day. Right? Very boring, silly kind of reflective listening. Okay? But it's a fundamental skill. Do I actually listen to what the content of this what they just said, OK? And can I reflect back to them so that, not so that I understand, but so they know that I understand. That's what the word conveying means, all right? The other person needs to know that I understand. And that's a really important point. It's not just that I understand. I have to know how to convey understanding. So in conveying understanding, I want to convey understanding both at an intellectual level, at a content level, and an emotional level. So when this person says, oh, God, life has been really hard right lately. It's been really difficult for me. You say, wow, you've been really having a bad time of it. And it sounds like you've been you're feeling pretty discouraged or bummed about the whole thing. Okay? So some kind of emotional content as well. Does that make sense? So there's, a, there's, a, there's the verbal content, and then there's the emotional content. And in order to convey understanding, I have to get both. I have to get both, and I have to convey that I got both. Right? And that's a very straightforward skill. Practice, practice, you get better at it. One of the things that I love about being a psychotherapist is I get to practice this stuff. And I'm really good at it now. But like 10 years ago, I was not nearly as good at it. And that's really cool for me to see. The other one is conveying caring. Well, gosh, here's this person. How do I convey caring for them? Some people, you convey caring by how you look. 
what your facial expression is. Some people you convey caring by what you say. Some people you convey caring by your tone of voice. Some people you convey caring by touching them. And guess what? We don't know. I don't know how to convey caring to this person until I learn that. Right? Because they have, this is like, again, just didn't want it to die. This is that sort of that image of the maze. What's the password? What's the password that this person needs? What does this person need to hear so that they feel that I genuinely do care about them? It's different for everybody. And it's different situationally. So we have to be willing to learn about that. Next one, the, what, what really creates a sense of connection? For many people, if I share, wow, I've had similar experiences. I can somewhat relate to your experience because I have similar experiences. Sometimes that really builds a sense of connection, right? Sometimes it doesn't. Right? Sometimes if you say to a person, wow, you know, when you say that, I feel really moved. It impacts me here. It touches me. I, th I have these thoughts like this. Sometimes that really builds a sense of connection. Sometimes it doesn't. Right? So again, it's like the willingness to learn, which is why it's all of this needs to be done within the context of truly wanting to connect with this person. Otherwise, you're not going to want to do this. You're not going to, it's like, wow, that's a lot of effort. Huh? Gee, do all of that with someone that I don't want to connect with? Well, why bother? Huh? So you have to start by actually being interested in connecting with this person. When we then apply that to ourselves, well, I have to think that it's worth connecting with myself. I have to think that there's some subpersonality, some part of myself that's feeling isolated and devalued and, and doesn't, I'm not in touch with. And I have to be genuinely interested in connecting with that part. If we're talking about my relationship with my higher power, well, to me, the path, the golden path to my higher power is my present tense experience. Well, let's say that uh, back to my somewhat traumatic history. If my expectation is that if I pay attention to the present moment, I'm going to feel like crap, there's not a lot of motivation, right? If my expectation, my expectation, like if I think about this in terms of my emotional universe, my expectation from my history is that if I pay attention to my emotional universe, I will find myself in some horrible state, and I will be completely isolated from all other human beings. Whoa, who wants to go there? Right? It's not a real attractive place to go. But if I really want to be open to my present tense experience, I have to learn how to do that. It's like there's a scared little Nando who's like two or three years old who's going, oh my god, I'm having this overwhelming emotional experience and there's no one here. All right? And that's really fundamental to my personal experience of life. Because that's like some of my earliest experiences. That's some of my, wow, this is what I think life is, is I'm lying in the crib crying and no one's coming. Yeah. Fortunately for me, my somewhat traumatic history doesn't entail horrible abuse and beatings and sexual violation and all of that. But it's still challenging. You know, there's still these parts of myself that are difficult for me to be present with. And therefore, how can I be present in the present moment? This continuing to make sense? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. What is your, the nature of your relationship to that particular experience? Say that you're in a, a, something triggers you in some way, some context, to feel you know, that lonely, abandoned, my question is, what is the nature of who, whatever the you is that's having this relationship with this some personality or this right. part of yourself? 
So the before picture, all right, is I don't want to have anything to do with it, and that is sinful and horrible, and I don't want to even touch it. Okay? The after picture is, oh, I'm familiar with this space. Oh, let me soften. Let me treat myself with gentleness and compassion. Here in my mind's eye, let me hold this part of myself. Let me, let me show up in that memory. Let me, let me convey that I never have to be isolated ever again. Absolutely, absolutely, because I have to repair that, repair that, repair that, until I'm okay there. Okay? And there's a question back there. Um, let's say you're in a business relationship with someone, and so you need to, to create some kind of connection with them, but you've been working at cost purposes all the time, a lot of blame and guilt, and you want to be true to yourself and you're communicating with them, but it, it never quite meshes. Well, one of the images that I have for relationship is, you know how two people can juggle those bats? Okay. And so we're tossing bats back and forth. Okay. When there's a glitch that happens in a relationship, one of the bats falls on the floor. I drop it. I don't throw it right. You don't throw it right. There's a bat on the floor. Okay. If we continue to pretend that no bats were dropped, then guess what? Not juggling anymore. No relationship. No juice in the relationship. Because the juice is these bats that we're passing back and forth. And to have a really functional relationship is based on, can we talk about the dropped bats? And if you can't, you can't have a functional relationship. Well, it's really challenging. I mean, these business relationships where you're stuck dealing with someone that really, you know, we know they're really challenging. And so it's, it's quite a difficult thing to find, wow, you know, here I'm in this relationship with this person. I can't get out of this relationship with this person. And they're constantly dropping bats. And I can't, I can't even find a way to talk about it. Right? One of the ways to start to talk about it is to start to acknowledge, see if there's some way to talk about the fact that, you know, it would be nice to have a more functional relationship. I notice that when we try to do something together, we're often at cross purposes. And I'd really like to find some way that that didn't happen. All right? Some people are going to be amenable to that. But the reality is that some people are just, like, clueless. All right? They're just not interested. And they don't have the skills. And to try and create a relationship with them is just, oh, oh. All right? Unfortunately, we have this experience. So yeah, Paul. I was thinking of uh, one of the, the C's in your caring and uh, connecting. Mm -hmm. And I was, you, just, you just addressed it because I was thinking that a conflict, you know, being able to deal with conflict is also a root to so much. So when you're saying that to be able to talk about the thing that falls on the floor, I think it's also really important. Yeah. Well, and if I go back to the maze image, my experience for myself is that I actually feel better, safer, with someone who's run into my barrier and stopped and said, oh, wow, I seem to have run into a barrier. Is what, what happened? What can we do about that? You know? Which is another, that's, that's the other metaphor. There's a bat on the floor. Oh, OK. They say, oh, we seem to have glitched here. The process of connecting and talking about the glitches is sometimes more powerful for creating safety than the process of having a good time with someone. You have that experience? Huh? And our re the research on you know, successful marriages is a lot that, that successful marriages are, are related to how these people resolve conflict? Do they do it in a way that's mutually satisfying? Are they OK with it? No? So, so we're going to take, uh, take a little break. And like five? Is that our standard thing? Ten? OK. So we're going to take a little 10-minute break. And at the end of the break, I'm going to be asking someone to volunteer to do a little process here. We're going to talk briefly and connect and do some, create some emotional intimacy between the two of us. And I would love to have someone that I've never met before 
So we have an opportunity to do this from, from the ground up. And uh, so if you're, if you're open to volunteering, if you could connect with me during the break. And I have 8 o'clock. So we're going to start at 8, 8.10. OK? Thank you. And, uh, what I'm going to start with is Thea was saying that she'd be willing to, to be a volunteer. And so we, the two of us, we're going to <clears throat> just have a, have a brief connection up here, a brief conversation, and create a sense of intimacy. And as we do that, um, Oh, Clea, That's I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. <clears throat> I'm going to get some chairs for us in a moment, so you can have a seat here. For me. Sure. But so as we as we do that, I'd like you to just keep an eye on well, ha what's happening? You know, what's happening with the defensiveness in either of us? What's happening in terms of efforts to create uh, to convey understanding, caring, or connection, or like that? And also, this is an important one. How does your body feel in sympathy with this process? What happens in your energy as you watch our energy? OK? So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And if you could draw that chair up, Clea, and, and I'll bring this other one up. We'll try and talk into this microphone so that, so that there's some volume and you can hear us. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, great. Thank you. This is also good for questions later. Good. It. OK. So can you check and see if that works? Oh, does it work? Yes. Cool. OK. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's understandable. <laughs> You're moving away from me. Oh, I'm moving away from that light, actually. <laughs> OK. Ah. <sighs> So thank you for being willing to do this. And my thought is for us just to have a little conversation and connect a little bit, OK? Mm -hmm. And so the start of that for me would be just to inquire with you if there's, given that you're a little nervous, is there anything that we can do that would just set you at ease more? I could go sit down again. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And, oh, okay. You can hear me? Okay. Yeah. I could put the mic down here. That, that'd be yeah. Good. She said she could go sit down again. Yeah. Given that you're, you're willing to be here and, and um, recognizing that you could go sit down again, um, is there anything else that you're aware of that that we could do just to, just to help you feel more comfortable? I guess remind me to breathe. Great. So let's do that together. Let's just breathe for a moment and And I wonder, as you breathe, if you'd be willing just to check in with your physical sensations, the present moment, and just share anything about, perhaps it's anxiety around being here, but anything around your present experience that, that draws your attention. I have butterflies in my stomach, and I realize how tense my shoulders and neck are. And as you breathe, would you be willing to just Let's just put a hand on the butterflies in your stomach area. Oh, and just breathing and feeling that. And perhaps there's something that I could offer or you could offer to the part of you that's anxious here that would help you know that you're safe here. Well, I could get rid of all the people. Well, we no. could. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm teasing. Okay. Um, Mike. Oh, Mike. Okay. Oh, I could get rid of all the people. Yeah. Um. I guess just eye contact probably helps. Right. It also is uh, hard. Right. So I just want to remind you that what I would like to do is create a situation for you where, despite 
all the people here, you felt comfortable. Okay. I, I do, really. I do. And I know that you do, but I'd like you to feel even more deeply comfortable. And... Um, is it a problem? Because that light is kind of distracting. Should I turn my chair a little, or...? If you're really distracted by it, we can scoot this way so okay. it's behind you. Okay, thank you. It's kind of right in my eyes. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's better. Huh. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. A little better? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So would you be willing to just, like, rate on a scale of 1 to 10, how open do you feel right now? open. I, I want this so badly. Yeah. I want to learn this. Okay. So there's a part of you that really wants to connect. Is that yes. what you're saying? Yes. And as you tune into that part of you that really wants to connect, where do you feel that? Uh, in my heart, um, in my solar plexus, and no, there's a scared child in here. So it's mainly my heart and so it's that issue. In my mind, too. Okay. So there, in your heart, you have the desire to connect. In your belly, you have a part of you that's scared. Yes. Can we pay attention just for a moment more to the part of you that's scared? Yes. And I just want to remind you again that I really want to treat you in a way that feels safe and comfortable for you. I really want to treat you with respect. See, I feel like crying right now. Yeah. And if you allow yourself just to, just to honor that desire to cry and just feel that, my sense is that as I say that, it touches you. There's some part of yeah. you that feels moved. Right? And that's, and where is that in your body? So your heart's getting some of that connection. I guess I'm not used to it. And as you say that you're not used to that, I, I feel sad too. There's, there's like, wow. So there's, there's this part of your heart that really wants to connect. And it's not happening enough in your life. Um, I think I use my sense of humor as um, my, that's how I'm defensive. I make yeah. jokes. So for right now, would you be willing to just feel your heart and feel the way that we've connected here? Yes. And as you feel that and let that in, how is it here? It's coming down. It's coming down. Yeah. So that scared child inside is a little like, oh, this feels a little safer. I didn't even know I felt sad. Yeah. It kind of caught me by surprise, too. Uh -huh. But there's something about genuine, the genuine desire to connect that touches you, that, that you recognize as, wow, that's something I want, I want in my life. Yes. Yeah. So, so I think that you can perceive, and I think that you all can perceive, that this very simple interaction, we create like a foundation of of connection that we could really build something on. And we could go into all sorts of places because I've, you've opened a, a very important door to me. Like I said, the password. Yes. Yeah. 
And so I really want to honor and respect that, that, that we've had this transaction that's, that's allowed you to be more open. Thank you. Yeah. And this is just this little tiny vignette, <laughs> you know? And, and yet, I want you to notice, wow, this is possible. And what I'm saying is that this is skill-based. So, you know, it's, I could learn this, you could learn this, you all could learn this, right? It's not that difficult. But it is based on, like, I really am interested in knowing who you are. It's like, this is fun for me. Huh? And you can feel that. Oh, yes. Yes, I can. Yeah. yeah. I, it's interesting that, that knowing somebody wants to know me or about me makes me sad. I mean, yeah. why would I be sad about that? Why would you be sad about that? I think it's because it takes away some protection. You have to let go of protection to let somebody in. And I'm guessing, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm guessing that probably there haven't been enough people in your life who have genuinely wanted to know who you are. No, I'm usually the caretaker. I'm yeah. the one that's interested in others, I think. So it makes sense to me that, that, that as that part was like contacted, was free to come out, that there'd be some like, oh, I've missed this, I've wanted this, I, and some tears, some sadness about that. Yes. Yeah. So, Clea, I would really want, I'd really like to support you in honoring your genuine desire for more attention that way and to see if there are places in your life where you can make more space for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I hold your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. We get to do just this little bit. That's sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, let's turn this thing off. Hi. Hi. <sighs> so, um, that was sweet. That puts me into a little altered state. So any questions or comments? Yeah. Well, I, because we know that you are a counselor, I was very aware of that you were getting to know her better than she was getting to know you. And you were the counselor, and she was the patient. Right. right. And one of the things that I find is true in creating intimacy with others is it's so much easier if one person pays attention to this person and then the roles switch. If you try to do it this, at the same time, it is very, very difficult. It's a little bit like if you're trying to scratch the person's back in just the right place and you're both doing it at once <laughs> or you're in one of those circle massages as opposed to just getting your shoulders massaged. Okay? It really is nice if you do it one way at a time. Okay? But if we both have these skills, then you know I can share this energy with Clea, and she can turn around and share the energy with me, share the quality of attention. Okay? Yeah. Um, I agree with you that there is skills involved with this, but I also yeah. agree with your other statement that you said it's really based on your desire to get to know her. And without that desire, it ain't going to happen. That's right. That's right. That's really the basis. That's right. And as a therapist, fortunately, I'm extremely nosy. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, I'm laughing about that, but it's really true. I'm, I am genuinely interested in other people's lives and what's going on in their hearts and their heads. And there are other people that that, that, that isn't what turns them on, you know? But for me, that really turns me on. That's really interesting to me. But in relationships, if you don't have that balance, yeah. those skills aren't going to make that work. Right. And it goes back to, like, if you have a business relationship with someone, where you're, you're looking to have a functional relationship and they're looking to have power over you. <laughs> you know, it's kind of doomed, you know? So we do have to recognize that, that it has to be this, this genuine interest. Now, if we, if we take these, remember my, my talk is really focused on our relationship with our higher power, okay? So the skills that we see demonstrated with someone else those are the skills that we want to practice in dealing with ourselves. And sometimes it's much easier to practice them with someone else because we can hear them and see them. Okay? If I can't create relationship with someone else, it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to create relationship with myself. And if I can't create a sense of openness with, with um, <clears throat> myself or someone else, it's, it's, it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to be open to the present moment. Just I'm going to have too much trauma-based fear in my body. So the skills, like I'm saying, the skills for creating intimacy, they're really very, very similar. So I want to genuinely, I need to genuinely want to connect with myself. I need to genuinely want to be open to the present moment. Now, I don't know about you folks, but being open to the present moment is a problematic thing. My present moment experience sometimes is pleasant and sometimes is unpleasant. All right? That ever happened for you? Okay. So being like wide open to my present experience when it's unpleasant is extremely difficult. Being wide open to my experience when it's like, great. It's like, hey, that's, you know, I'm willing to do that, right? But, ooh, I don't want to be. So that's doomed, right? If we want to be really present in this present moment, the truth of the matter is, <clears throat> I know what this moment feels like, but I don't know about you folks, but I don't know what next moment feels like. So, Openness to the present moment requires that I have the courage and the capacity to be present with what happens. I have to have the courage and capacity to self-soothe when I'm in the midst of an unpleasant experience. Did that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, like, the Buddhist tradition talks about this in, in terms of equanimity and non-attachment. Right? The Christian tradition talks about this in terms of faith. Right? We have to put our faith in God. We have to cultivate equanimity, you know, the ability to breathe and be present with what our unfolding experience is. Right? It's very difficult to do that. But most, the thing is that most spiritual traditions, they don't talk about this as like, oh, yeah, this, we, we just want you to drill this one, your relationship with the present moment. And most spiritual traditions, unfortunately, don't talk about the, the relationship of these skills with your relationship with other people and with your relationship with yourself. To me, these are the same thing. I don't know about you folks, but I've met a lot of people who were on the spiritual path and yet their relationship skills with other people were kind of sketchy. Okay? Or, you know, you meet this person, they're really on their spiritual path, but they're like so perfectionistic that you know what their internal voice is. Right? It's like way critical. That's not the right diet. You know? <laughs> Whatever it is. Right? Okay? No, we don't do that asana that way. So 
I'd now like to, like to shift to another exercise, if you would. I think that my, my experience is I learn personally much better by doing than by someone else doing or talking or like that. I want to give you an opportunity to share about your openness to your present experience with another person and to work at making that more open. And my suggestion is that you do these four things, that you set your intent, your intent being, I'd like to learn how to help you feel safe with me. All right, so I'm creating this relationship with another person, and I'm trying to figure out, gosh, here's this other human being. How do I create safety for this person so that they are willing to be more open with me? The truth of the matter is, I don't know how to do it yet. So I have to learn. I have to go, oh, gosh, I'm interested in learning how to do this. And that has to be done within the context of genuine interest. Wow, I'm genuinely interested in knowing who you are. I know that that's going to help myself. I'm kind of selfish about that. It's going to help me learn my skills and yada, yada. But I'm genuinely interested in who you are. How can I help you feel safe with me? And then, as the person shares with you, Convey that you understand. Convey, oh, I, un I understand your words, your content. And I also grok your emotional tone. I can relate to your emotional tone. I, can, I, I sense what that's about. Okay? That's conveying understanding. And then conveying caring. Conveying caring is like, wow, what you're feeling actually matters to me. No? Which, again, is like it's an internal attitude. I can't do that if I don't care. Right? I'm just conveying caring. But the word conveying here is really important. Understanding comes before conveying. Caring comes before conveying. Right? And then the last one is connecting. And sometimes connecting works best if you say, gosh, when you share that, I feel this way. I feel impacted by you. Sometimes it works best if you say, gosh, I can relate to that because this has happened in my life. You know, I'm similar to you in this way. That's a discovery process as well. One of the things that's fundamental to doing this kind of thing about really exploring openness is you're going to run into glitches. You're going to run into dropped balls. You're going to run into, into barriers where you need the password. And when you run into defensiveness or a glitch in another person, you have to actually be interested in soothing that. You have to actually be interested in helping the person feel more comfortable, as opposed to judging them, criticizing them, feeling superior. Oh, I'm not defensive. I'm so open. <laughs> All right? Okay. It's so easy to fall into that, though, isn't it? You know, someone, had some, someone does some little defensive number with you, and you go, whoa, are you defensive? All right. OK, clear enough job description? So let's take, let's see what I got here. OK, we're doing quite well. Um, let's take like oh, 15 minutes, 7, 7, something like that. OK? No, we don't have that much time, sorry. So 6-6 six, six is what I'm going to give you, <laughs> OK? So I'm going to call the time. I'd, what I'd like you to do is find a partner. One person is going to be the therapist role or the, the person who's trying to create safety for the other person. And then I'm going to call time and say, please, you know, in the next minute or so, please switch roles. Switch roles, you'll get another six minutes. OK? Go to, if you need a partner, raise your hand. So I'm glad to see you all connecting and getting to know each other a little better. It's an important part of the function of the, the metaphysical library. Oh. So I'm, I'm gathering by the just by how, how you all want to keep talking together that this worked pretty well. Don't stop us. Uh, so, so I'm curious, just on a scale of 1 to 10, 
If you could just hold up your hands about how well you feel this worked for you. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Did you have a question or okay? So so I want to I want to commend this little process to your mind, okay? All we're doing is just saying, hey, let's contract. I'm going to pay attention to you. You're going to pay attention to me later. We're going to have, t you know, some sort of kitchen timer going, you know. <laughs> right? but, but just separating the roles, because the roles of creating safety and intimacy for another person, it's really different than the role of talking about my own stuff. And if I separate these and make the job descriptions distinct, it really helps. It really helps. Yeah. Have you heard of co-counseling? Yeah, this is, a, you know, co-counseling is all based on that. And this is more specifically targeted at creating intimacy. And so I have, I have um, we need to be finishing up in the next, like, 10 minutes, OK? So I have a, some handouts that talk about creating intimacy in the back on that table there. I really encourage you to grab one as you go by. It says creating intimacy at the top. Okay. And um, I also, you know, one of the, the reasons that I, I present this, this material, I, I, I try to do free presentations frequently here in the community. Um, I feel very fortunate to live here in the Rogue Valley, and I, and I have lots of um, emotional connections with this place and with the people that live here. And so it's, it's wonderful for me to offer this back to the community in this way. And the reality is that I come here to build my business, too. So there's, there's that business part of it. So I really, you know, just doing the plug, OK? <laughs> So, so I do psychotherapy, all right? So if you're interested in working on, on your own stuff or you know someone who's, who could benefit from the work that I do, I do individual and couple psychotherapy. Some of, a lot of the work that I do these days is based on energy psychology as well. And so I'm integrating that material into the foundation of creating intimacy and my prior training in Hakomi and voice dialogue and neuro-linguistic programming and all this other stuff. I also I have a, a group that meets every other week that's on, on creating intimacy that's focused specifically on that. And that's a low, low fee, low time uh, way to invest in yourself and into creating some of these skills, building some of those. There are flyers for that on the back table as well. I'm also, one of the things that I love doing is playing outside. And so I've created a, a, a workshop where we get to play outside and work on intimacy issues at the same time. And that's going to be here on July 23rd and 24th. We're going to be going up and using the Earth Teach Challenge course, their ropes course up there. So we're going to be doing some some, uh, some intimacy work and then playing on the ropes and the trees and like that and doing some intimacy work. For those of you who have never had the opportunity to do a challenge course, it is so fun. It is so fun to do. And it's usually, you know, the kids get to go up and do this kind of stuff. So it's like, give it to yourself. Give yourself the the reward of getting to go out and play in the woods, build a sense of teamwork and camaraderie with each other. It's a really wonderful experience. So there are flyers on that in the back as well. My other, you know, my other hat is I teach Tai Chi classes, and those are weekly. And that's a great way to create intimacy with your physical body. Tai Chi is all about paying attention to your physical body and creating a sense of openness to what's true in your physical body, how to move. And then I'm also really open to just putting something together. If, you, if any of you want to put together something that would be targeted at creating intimacy among a small group of friends, wow, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This would be like a grown-up birthday party. Yeah, there we go. So, so that's there. and. Um, I also I have this. This got passed around. I'm not sure whether how many of you saw this, but this is a just a little sign-up sheet 
It's got an email, and you can put, if you're interested in, um, in, any, in a particular program, please let me know about that. And uh, I, send, I send emails around when I do a presentation, a free presentation. So it's not like I'm going to spam you. But this is a way just to, just to keep in touch, if you would. So if you haven't signed in, please do sign in. And um, if I can do anything else to earn your business or earn the business of your friends or family, um, I'm really interested in hearing about that. And I hope that this evening was educational and useful for you. And I hope you had a great time. And go out and create intimacy with other people and spend time being sweet with yourself and, and cultivate being present in the, you know, in the present moment. So thank you very much. Yeah. RVML Resource Center is a volunteer-operated federal 501c3 tax-exempt nonprofit organization. RVML is dedicated to providing easy access to a comprehensive collection of information on a variety of metaphysical, spiritual, and personal development subjects. RVML accepts and appreciates all donations. Material and monetary contributions are fully tax-deductible. This recording is not copyrighted and permission is granted to broadcast, exhibit, or duplicate all or part of this program for non-commercial educational purposes. This live presentation was organized and presented by the Rogue Valley Metaphysical Library and Event Center. For more information, please visit rvml.org.